future, uh, not poetry, but plumbing? Is that, is that the future of the lab? Uh, plumbing would, of course, be useful. Uh, there, being, <laughs> there being a shortage of them. Uh, as the only non-member of the left on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Particularly the best to Matthew, who expropriated or nationalized my joke uh, at the beginning of his uh, beginning of, 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 of his own performance, thereby revealing his true colours. I, mean, I feel I need to take a slightly different line from the other speakers and to make one or two serious points, unlike what I regard as the skating around the problem which has so far taken place. What is the left? What is it for? And uh, why has it stopped thinking for it undoubtedly has? It is a movement, of course, like all political movements, for persuading poor people to vote better off people into office where they can enjoy its perks. But it is also, of course, as a result of that, a movement which seeks causes. And for the first half of the 20th century, the causes were mainly those of state ownership, of the advancement of trade unions, of egalitarianism in general. When those causes had run out of road in the mid-1950s, in this country particularly, Anthony Croston wrote The Future of Socialism and defined its causes differently, but very much as egalitarian, very much as a continued thrust towards a whole equal society for everybody except members of the Labour government. Particularly, he devoted an enormous amount of effort, and when he came into government, he fulfilled that, into destroying the education system and, uh, and, and creating instead a, 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 a system of social engineering whose purpose is first of all to create an egalitarian society and only secondarily to educate people in a long way, secondarily, I might add. There are other elements in the left which have crept in. They've crept in from Fabianism, from the Bloomsburys, from the Frankfurt School, and uh, in, increasingly in recent years also from Antonio Gramsci. These are to do with the cultural destruction of a conservative religious society and a generalized broad front attack on personal responsibility in all its forms, which of course encompasses the left's most virulent battle, which is against the married family, something which it strives with increasing energy to destroy and wipe from the scene, as evinced by the current human fertilization bill, in which the role of the father is specifically excluded by legislation from being <coughs> anymore. That's the left for you. Now, if all this had resulted in the paradise, or even the mildly improved society, which the left claimed that it was going to do, then it might be that this was excusable, and it might be that there would be a reason for the left to sit complacently about in either the Labour or the Conservative parties in which its ideas are now wholly dominant, and say, yep, that's fine, we should carry on just managing society the way it is. But anybody who ventures outside the very small area of London inhabited by the political class discovers very rapidly that in this country, at least, also a problem in other countries, but not quite so for us. In this country, at least, almost total social breakdown, the collapse of obligation, and as I, as I say, accompanied very much by the collapse of personal responsibility, uh, a rule of tremendous ignorance, uh, a, a, a cultural dispoliation, which means that, that uh, a, a, a working class which once uh, was incredibly well educated by the sounds of the world is now almost wholly deprived of knowledge. This has been the achievement. I could go on for hours about how terrible it is out there, and many of you will encounter it at some point in the next few years if you haven't encountered it already. It's failed. Under those circumstances, any intelligent person would say, if what we have been doing for the past 20 or 30 or 40 years has failed so abjectly, we ought to be changing our minds. But if you approach any of these people with any suggestion that that is what they ought to be doing, their response is a blank refusal to listen and a categorization of the critic and in some way pathologically deformed. Try it, I have. <laughs> I, 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 just, I, mean, I, 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 like, I want to throw this in because I, I came to this meeting. I, I, actually, I'm only here, not because I was originally on the panel, but because when I was told that the, the event was taking place, I politely emailed an RSVP saying, yes, I'd like to come, and was immediately invited to speak. I don't think nobody's coming. Oh, well, great. Uh, in, in which case, I will make a small point uh, about the Orwell Prize, and a point which I feel, and I... I Although, to some extent, this is a, this, this, this is a, a, a breach of uh, good manners towards my host, I feel I nonetheless need to say. Uh, last year, uh, I was shortlisted for the Orwell Prize. Uh, this year, I wasn't even longlisted, and I had to sit and watch as Alistair Campbell's memoirs uh, found their way onto the shortlist of the, of, of, of the books, which George Orwell was supposed to have been uh, inspiriting. 
And I thought to myself, this is beyond a joke. <laughs> and I still do think it's beyond a joke. And I think that there is, there, there is something severely wrong with an Orwell Prize, which is almost exclusively devoted to parading the works of the fashionable left, and which is uninterested in the ideas of anybody who steps outside it, to the extent of actually honouring on its long list a book by Anderson Campbell. I'll leave it there. I guess the left has obviously stopped thinking. Thank you.